Tonight my text is found in Proverbs chapter 4, but I have many passages of scripture. If you want to turn there, you can. I'm sure they'll have it on the screen. I'm going to read it from New King James, but they might have it in the King James Version. It's powerful, and I'm laying the foundation of what I want to talk about tonight. How many know we changed our name of our conference from Rain to Rain? And we reign, R-E-I-G-N, we are reigning with him. Forever we shall reign. We are joint heirs with Christ. Amen? So that means that we're royalty. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 4 says, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget. Nor turn away from the word, words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her. Now, I know it says her, but wisdom is for men as well. It's not just for women. We all need godly wisdom, and wisdom beyond our years should be our prayer. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, What does grace mean? Unmerited favor. A crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear and receive, O son and daughter. Your years will be many. When you walk, you will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction and do not let it go. Keep her, for she is your life. Wisdom is your life. What is wisdom tonight? Wisdom simply is the word of God. Wisdom is being in his presence. Wisdom is connecting to him. And all your ways, if we do that in verse 26 says, all your ways will be established. That means God foreordains everything. He knows everything. He wants us to pursue wisdom. And tonight I'm going to be saying several times, it is written. I'm going to be saying the word of God says, and you may be new to the faith. You may have just gotten saved two days ago when we knocked on your door. And you may be wondering, I don't understand anything she's saying, but we cannot understand everything that we're saying because we think with our mind, but God wants you to connect with the spirit. Some things are taught and some things are caught. I'm praying that tonight that you will catch what I'm saying because we can listen to what I'm saying over and over again. It can go in one ear and out the other. You can hear the word many, many times. And then by the time the evening is over, go into the foyer, talk to several people and start talking about what women talk about, what men and men talk about and forget everything that has happened tonight. But when you catch something in the spirit, it is ignited inside of you. And each each one one of us was a hollow vacuum at one time. But when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, so you may be new to this tonight, but if you prayed the prayer of salvation with us, what happened to you was that the Holy Spirit came in to your temple, to your body, and now he is Lord of your life. And you have just as much privilege as those that have been serving God for 30 years, those that have been serving God for two minutes, or those that have been serving God for two hours. You are a child of the King, and royal blood flows through your veins. So I'm asking you to catch this tonight. Don't try to think about it. Don't try to understand everything. Catch it in the Spirit. Father God, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that your spirit brings life. We thank you, Father, for the rhema word. We praise you, we give you glory, and we give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Tonight I want to talk simply about, do you realize, I'm going to ask you this question, do you realize how valuable you are? Do you realize how important you are to God? No matter what age you are, no matter if you've been serving God many years, there are seniors in this room, there are teenagers in this room, there are young kids in this room, and it doesn't matter what age, God is asking us all the unique same question, do you know and do you realize how valuable you are? 
And we suffer, many people suffer from a poor self-esteem, and it's prevalent in our society. Sometimes when we look at each other, we don't look at each other eye to eye. We're afraid to connect eye to eye. So we put our head down, and we think that's walking in humility. But God is saying, look at that person head on. You are valuable, and you are important to God. And why is it important that you see yourself the way God sees you? Because if we don't see ourselves the way God sees us, we'll always be holding back, and we'll always be living in the lack, will always be living in the I can't and what if and my day is miserable, but God wants us to rise above that. We're going to continually say that over and over again. I'm going to be 99 years old, Granny Ellen, saying the same thing to you a hundred thousand times. And you said, how many times are we going to hear this story that they moved from Canada and dug a well? Well, a million times one. You're going to hear it over and over again because someone has never heard it. Come on. And there are two different strains of thinking. There's the person that's, that says, that thinks constantly with the mind. And when we're thinking with the mind, it's constantly, I think, I think, I know. I think, I think, I think. And when we're thinking with our mind, we live in our emotions. We live in our feelings. And we're constantly moved by what people say about us by what they think about us, but should we go here or should we not there? And a, a double-minded man or woman is unstable in all their ways, and God wants us to be focused on him. And when we're constantly saying, I think I should do this, our, we're thinking in the theology mind. We're thinking in the entertainment world. But God's word says, I don't think, I know. I know that I'm a child of God. I know who I am in Christ. It's not no longer I think I am this. I think what my mother said to me as a little girl is going to stay with me. And you may have been told, you can't do anything. You're going to amount to no good. Many teachers and, 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 and people that have surrounded you in your youth could have told you the wrong thing. And that has formed your train of thought. And you'll look in the mirror and say, I don't like what I see. I don't like who's in front of me. And that's the problem. We think too much. But God wants us to stop thinking. Lord, bypass our mind and get into our spirit. And when we start to think the way God sees us, we start to say words like, wait a minute, I don't think I know who I am. I know that I have been forgiven. When we knocked on several doors yesterday, we asked people, do you know that heaven will be your home one day? And Answer after answer came back to us. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Well, do you want to be sure right now? And we wouldn't stop at I hope so. We led them to the Lord and we said, after they prayed with us, well, now when anybody asks you, are you sure heaven will be your home? You could say, I know that I know that I know. I know that I know that I know. I know royal blood flows through my veins. I know I'm a child of the king. I know that my sins are forgiven. I know that I've been washed in the blood of the lamb. And once you have been touched by God, you're never ever the same again. So if you're here tonight and we saw you on the streets, this is the reality of it. Once you've been touched by God, you're never ever the same again. That's what everybody in this room has experienced. We are never the same again because his blood has touched us, has changed us. So we're not, not led by our feelings and emotions. Well, I don't feel like going to church. Well, I don't feel like getting in my car. Can you imagine if Jesus said that? I don't feel like dying on the cross today. Let them go off and have their own thing going. Thank God that he loved us. Thank God that he gave himself for us. And God wants us to love him with all our heart, with all our spirit, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our, all our body, all our strength, everything that is within us. Psalms 139, 13. This is a powerful portion of scripture. It says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know this full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is an awe word in that. I am full of awe. I'm full of inspiration. When I even say those two words, I'm 
fearfully and wonderfully made. When you have accepted Christ and he is now Lord of your life, you are no longer your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, we cannot do whatever we want to with our bodies. Our bodies belong to the Lord. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. They house his presence when Stephen was about to be stoned, he stood before the council and he said these words, the most high God does not dwell in houses made by man. These four walls have been built by men. This carpet, this, the, the chairs you're sitting on has been built by men. But what hasn't been built by men, what has been built by the almighty God is you. And you're most God's valuable treasure. And you house the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the dwelling place is you. So therefore, when we came in tonight and praised and worshiped the Father, we brought the Holy Spirit with us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And come on, power flows through this room as we praise and worship the Lord together. In one unity, in one accord, one note together. Come on, like-minded, together. Together we praise and worship the Father. And suddenly there came a sound as of a mighty rushing wind when we're all together. Do you believe that? Why can't it happen now? I believe it's already happening. I believe we're in revival. I believe Great Life Church is in revival. I'm not praying for revival. I'm in revival because I love him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I praise and worship the Father all the time, every day, day and night, night and day. We praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Do you realize how valuable, valuable you are? I'm going to say that slower. Valuable you are. The innermost parts is what God looks at. Out of the depth of my heart, I cry unto the Father. John chapter 7, verse 38 says, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Your innermost belly, your heart, your stomach. I know the word belly isn't exactly attractive, but it's somewhere in there. It's somewhere in there. Out of the in there there, out of the rumblings and bumblings in your tummy, you'll feel, you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit when we do something wrong. You feel God speaking to you when he says, go left, and you want to go right, and then you go right anyway, and then you realize I should have gone left because I'm miserable because I went right. You're miserable until we do the will of God. When we do the will of God, we're blessed, and we obey, and we're so happy, and God says, yield to him. God says, I'm when you yield to me, when you surrender to me, God says, then I'm responsible now for you. I'm responsible. So quit trying to control your life and quit trying to keep our hands on everything. When we yield to God, he says, I'm responsible for you. Romans 8 says, if the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives inside of you. May the God of peace sanctify you and completely may your spirit, soul, and mind and body be preserved blameless. I'm laying all the foundation here to get where I'm going. Do your part and God will do his part. Do your part and God will do his part. Amen? Amen? Catching it so far? And so when we praise and worship the Father, we unite ourselves to God. Why are we loud? God's not deaf. That's not why we're loud. I scream out to him. I mean, I scared my dogs today. I was praising and worshiping the Father, dancing all over my living room. From, from the moment Pastor left the house, I just went all over the place, scared the dogs to death. They started howling like wolves. Out they went. I kicked them out of the house. Get out. I'm going to praise and worship the Father. I'm telling you, I had a revival. Revival in my living room. Revival in my kitchen today. Revival outside in my garden today. Because it's in me. And what's in you is going to come out of you. What's in you is going to come out of you. When the angel visited Mary, Mary was a 15-year-old girl. Can you imagine being 15 and being visited by an angel who's going to tell you you're, you're pregnant? Oh, goody. Gee, I can't wait. 
I don't get a bridal shower. I don't get a baby shower. I get nothing. I don't even have a boyfriend. And now I am going to have a baby. Well, thank you for that pick-me-up. No, she didn't have that attitude. You know, when an angel visits you, you're basically, whoa, it's an angel. I better be quiet. But she says in this portion of scripture in Luke, you'll see that she begins to praise the Lord. And she says, my soul magnifies the Lord. When you open your mouth and you say, I praise you, Father, I magnify you, I glorify you, I worship you, I exalt you more than anything. As you're saying that, what happens in the next portion of scripture, it says her spirit began to rejoice. So that means if you're depressed or going and you're feeling woe is me and you're wondering why you're married to who you're married to and your children aren't serving the Lord and you're wondering what's happening in your life and nothing's going right and your bank account's at $5.25 all the time and you're wondering what is going on, begin to praise and worship the Father and your soul will lift. As our son lay dying in the hospital room, the, the Lord spoke to pastor and he said, don't pray. Don't pray right now just praise me just praise me and as we began to praise we saw the miracle take place we saw the woman who came in and anointed him with oil I believe she was an angel and then we never saw her again ever we entertain angels unawares you don't know what's going to happen day in day out as you praise and worship the father he is going to embrace you he's going to overtake you He's going to surround you with his glory. When we live in the I think realm, we entertain the things of this world. We live in manipulation. We live in criticism. But when we are led by the spirit of God, we live under worship, revelation, and discernment. You know, Haman, uh, in the story of Esther, he created gallows that he hung him, that he was hung on himself. His name means manipulation. But how many know that story? Esther was a queen and she became the star. Her name was Hadassah in the beginning and then God used her in the end. And if tonight you have accepted the Lord as your savior on the streets. I want you to understand these four key things. No matter when you accepted the Lord, no matter when he came into your life, I want you to never ever forget these words. When you got saved, life came in your spirit. It filled that emptiness. You may have filled that emptiness before with alcohol. You may have filled it with any other kind of addiction. You may have filled it with gossip. You may have filled it with shopping. And I'm not, uh, you know what? Sometimes I mention those people that have just got saved. You may have been saved for 30 years and sitting in a church, but you're dry as last year's bird's nest. It's time for a rejuvenation and a refiring, and it's time for an oil change. I would rather have a person newly saved and on fire for God so excited than someone who says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, that's the worst kind of person that you could be. Don't go and don't be there. Once you get saved, life is in your spirit. And then what happens once that life is in the spirit, then you're connected to God. You're connected to him. And what happens thirdly, that was the second thing. The third thing is the enemy has lost all control. You know what happened to the enemy when you said, Jesus, come into my heart, fill me, save me, touch me, uh, forgive me of my sin. I will never, ever be the same again. The enemy took off into the pigs over the cliff and that's where he is. You know the story in the Bible. He took off and he has no power here. And then the fourth thing, the fourth thing is God is all about relationship. Now that you've accepted Christ, the life is in your spirit. You're connected to God. The enemy lost control and God says, now I'm in relationship with you. That's the whole design. That's the whole thing about being in relationship to God. So now I finally laid all that foundation. Pretty good. 814. And I'm sweating like T.D. Jakes. Wow. And you know what? I really don't care. <laughs> Pastor is always telling me, why don't you ever come swimming with me? This is my... This is me swimming, ready? I go into the pool, 
one minute, and I'm out. I just go in, dip, out. <laughs> That's swimming, because, you know, I really can't swim. I doggy paddle, and it's quite embarrassing being 56 years old and doggy paddling. <laughs> I mean, my dog swims better than I do. So, I just don't even bother, but to right now, I'm gonna tell you, I feel like I'm swimming. You are valuable to God. And when you're valuable to God, he promises us this. Eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Eye has not even seen. Don't think you figured out your life. You haven't figured out anything. Eye has not seen. We serve a big God. We serve a mighty God. He who does the will of God abides forever. He who does his will. Isn't the word of God so powerful? Yes. I'm telling you. I laid the foundation about wisdom. And um, sometimes when I can't sleep at night, I've told people this many, many times. I go into the book of Leviticus and it just wipes you right out. It really does. <laughs> it has got to be the most boring book in the Bible. But each, each book of the Bible has its meaning and has its has its purpose, I guess, but when I start reading he begat who and who begat who, <laughs> like I really don't care if the sheep were numbered, you know, I, I, I just don't care. But I, I said, Lord, I, I, I realize that you have a purpose. And then when you need joy in your life, I think you should all go to Philippians because it mentions rejoice at least 17 times in Philippians. And there's over 8,000 promises in the word of God. So when I say word of God, to all those who are newly saved, I mean the Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, we will get you a Bible pronto. And I encourage you not to start in the book of Leviticus because you just might lose your salvation. Sorry, Lord, forgive me. Did I say that? It's in your book. Forgive me. So what I mean is start in the book of John and that'll give you a good foundation of what what we do, what we do. But I have to share a hilarious verse with you. Can I show? This, the Word of God, the Bible, is so full of treasures. Come on, it's so full of great passages. There's some, there's some you know, ones, you know, who are the Amalekites, the Jebusites, you know, the Cellulites, and the, <laughs> the Mosquito Bites, and all those. I don't understand the purpose of them in there, but they are. Now, let me read this one. This is going to make you laugh. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. I read this and I was on the floor and I read it so many times and it's so hilarious to me because you know the first passage I read about wisdom in Proverbs, right? I read about wisdom. Okay, listen to this. For we dare not class ourselves, this is Paul talking, or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. If that doesn't sum up the speaker of the house, I don't know what does. Wow! I had a good laugh. I gotta read it again, can I? You'll put it on the screen if you want to. But I'm reading out of New King James. I don't know what version they'll come up with here. But it says, For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. <laughs> oh, you can throw in there whatever family member you want to. And I'm sure... We can throw in names. Lord, forgive us. You know, I pray for all those in authority. I do. I pray for those, our Congress and our Senate. I pray that the Holy Spirit would just zap them. Yeah. Amen. Now that I've laid this glorious foundation, I have a few minutes left, and here we are. Matthew chapter 13 says this. There was a merchant, and this merchant was seeking beautiful pearls. He dealt in pearls. So that if you're a merchant, that means you're an expert at what you do. And he was an expert at pearl finding. You know, he didn't, he didn't search for any knockoffs, Chanel knockoffs. 
you know, those fake pearls. He didn't search for any of those. You can spot a genuine pearl. You know what's fake and you know what's real. You know, these diamond people, they know what's a zirconia. I know mine's real. I'm pretty sure. His pastor always seeks out the best. He always tells me the story. He, you know, when he was about to propose, he had all these diamonds laid out on a black velvet cloth in front of the jeweler. And he's looking through this thing, pretending like he knows what he's looking for. You know, if you see colors or whatever. So, you know how these guys, when they're about to propose, always want the biggest diamond. Well, he said, he actually listened to the jeweler. He said, the biggest diamond isn't always the best one. It's the one that's right here that's got no flaws in it. This is the one you want for her. It's the perfect diamond. And that's the one he got me. And I believe him. <laughs> I do. I believe him. If you don't know us, we really love to have fun. <laughs> okay, so let me get back to my story. The merchant was seeking beautiful pearls, and he finally found the most perfect pearl. And when he found it, he sold all that he had, and he bought this one pearl. Can you imagine going home to your wife? Honey, I've got some great news. I've been in the pearl business for 40 years. I've looked at pearl after pearl after pearl after pearl, and I found the perfect one. The bad news is I sold all the cars, I sold the dogs, I gave away the kids, I sold the house, I did everything for this one perfect pearl. And I believe she had the frying pan ministry then. And I believe she would have said, your life is over. But if she was a woman of God, she would have said, no, I trust you. I trust your judgment. You know, when pastor says to me, I, I have heard from the Lord, I can honestly tell you that's all I need to hear. Because I know I'm married to a man of God, and when he says it, that's it. I just know. And so... This merchant finally found this perfect pearl, and when he found it, he sold all that he had. And how many know the, anything about pearls? Pearls are formed in suffering. Pearls are formed in much abrasion. It's in that clamshell. I believe it's a clamshell. Well, it's a shell. I'm not a pearl expert. But it's in a shell, and there's the pearl inside, and it's one sand, piece of sand, that is constantly irritating it and being abrasive until it works that pearl into the sparkling thing it is. How many have ever walked anywhere and there's a pebble in your shoe? Do you think you could walk a mile or two with a pebble in your shoe? Are you kidding? You're going to sit down on a stump or something, take that shoe off, take the pebble out of there and fling it somewhere, and then put your shoe back on. Nothing is more irritating than something that's abrasive, something that's really irritating you. Like me in bed eating corn chips when pastor's trying to read. That is the worst irritation. But I know, I, I like those Fritos corn chips. And he says, you got to stop chewing them so loud. I mean, they could hear you all the way at the church. Well, I just love snacking. But there's nothing more irritating than someone... So, you know, I have to get out of bed. I, I know, isn't that terrible? I'm eating in bed. But now you know. So I have to get out and go into the family room and finish my corn chips. But anyway, so pearls are formed through suffering. And you may be saying, I'm not worthy. I'm suffering. I'm broken. I'm depressed. But other people are important and I'm not. But God is saying this, and this is where I'm closing tonight. Jesus gave everything that he had. He gave away the riches in glory. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He took on poverty, but he wasn't poor. When you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, you're the richest person in the universe. But he came, became poor for our sakes. Amen? That's what the scripture says. Through his poverty, you, he, he allowed us to become rich in him. And the pearl tonight 
is you. You are that pearl in that shell. God sees you where you're at. God loves you exactly the way you are. He is forming you. And sometimes we want to bypass the valley and go straight to the mountaintop. But I'm going to tell you honestly tonight before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, I thank God for every trial that I've been through because it has enabled us to start this church and be where we are today. I thank God that sometimes it wasn't easy. If everything in life was easy, we wouldn't appreciate the struggle and everything that we're going through. But God wants us to call on him, to ask him, to keep on knocking, to keep on seeking, to keep on searching. And God wants you to be specific. If you're believing God for a husband tonight, be specific with him. Don't ask God for just any old man. You want a guy who has teeth. You want a guy who has a job. You want a guy who can drive a car with four wheels, not three. Be specific with God. If you're believing God for a house, ask him for a house with a walk-in closet. Why should you be suffering and putting all your clothes in a broom closet? God wants each and every woman in here to have a walk-in closet. I'm going to tell you what I did. I, we're empty nesters now. We took over the house and I took Maddie's old room and Tori's old room and they're both mine for just my clothes. That's how much Jesus loves us. That's how much he loves us. What did he say? I don't want to know. He loves us in our weakness. He loves us in our failures. He loves us in our frustrations. He loves us when we look in the mirror and say, I'm not exactly happy. I don't like what I see. He's right there. He sees every cry and every prayer that you've prayed. And God is saying, call unto me and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The most dangerous thing we do is overthink things. The most dangerous thing we say is, I think I am not going to do this. But God is saying, I know. I want you to start saying, I know who I am. Set your mind on things above. Be renewed by the spirit of your mind every single day. It's very, very critical and very, very important in these last days that everything that comes out of our mouth brings glory to the Father. That everything that we say brings glory to Him. We are going to stand in front of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's not going to ask me about my children. He's not going to ask me about my church. He's going to say, what have you done for me? And my motive better be right. We'll be judged by our motive, not by our works. A lot of the people in this church and in this room and in this state do good works. People bring groceries to people. People bring stuff. People are benevolent. But we're not going to be judged by how many groceries we bought. It's our motive in bringing those groceries. Because I, when God says, bring a cup of cold water to someone, it means as much than someone who stands in this pulpit. It means everything to God when we do and are led by the Spirit of God and when we obey His Word. And so God wants us to have His mind. Create in me a clear mind, a clean, sharp mind, Father. Create in me a clean heart, a pure heart, a holy heart before you. Let every motive of ours be pure. If you love souls, love souls for the right reason, to see them ushered into the presence of God. And let's be motivated by doing good works unto the Father. And none of these works will will move God like our heart moves him. So out of that vacuum, that connection to God, God wants us to pour everything back into him as he pours into us. That's what it means to have an oil change. He wants you to know that you're valuable to him. As much as that pearl was to that merchant, you are that pearl tonight. You are that pearl tonight. See yourself the way God sees you. No longer I that liveth but Christ in me, but Christ that liveth in me. So when I look in the mirror right now, I don't see Ellen Billsboro. I see a daughter of the King. I see that I have been purchased with the blood of Christ. I see that he's paid the price. 
He left heaven. He left royalty. And he took the one pearl in his hand. He didn't die on the cross for a faulty pearl. He died on the cross for a perfect pearl that's flawless. You are formed in your mother's womb, intricately made and woven, and God put us together. So if he put us together and we're the perfect pearl, how dare we say, I don't feel like doing this, or I don't feel like going to church, or I think I'm not going to do this, or I think I'm this, or I think I'm low, or I think I'm nothing. God is saying, I want you to start saying, I know who I am. I'm a child of the King of Kings, royal blood flows through my veins. And tonight is your night. Tonight is your opportunity. The Holy Spirit is here. He's in this room. We brought him with us and he's looking in and amongst the seats right now he's moving and if you're feeling tormented by something that you've done in your past maybe you've had an abortion maybe you've had something a bad marriage maybe you've gone through a divorce maybe you've gone through bitterness maybe you don't you can't escape how you think of yourself but god wants you to say this is the way i think of you god wants you to see that and tonight there are women in this room who know how to pray with you and for you. There are women in this room as you leave tonight that will love on you, that will surround you, that will embrace you. You are here with people that once were blind, but now we can see. Once we have been broken, but now we have been made whole. Once we were bruised, but Jesus Christ lives on the inside of us. Therefore, I no longer will be led by the enemy or led by those thoughts. Stop saying, I think, I think, I think. And start saying, I know, I know, I know who I am. I know who I am. I am the redeemed. I am the blood-bought. 